Hi friend, how are you? Today we are doing a throwback video. We are using as many products as we can from 2016 to 2018 era. Let's go in with this nice expired lipstick. I probably won't die. It'll be fine. That makeup, it seems to be coming back and I'm super excited about it. So if you're interested in 2016, 2018 era makeup and how awesome it is that it's coming back, then just stay tuned. So the first throwback item here is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. Now this is like the sample size and mine's very old, but they did come in bigger bottles. I think Smashbox is like, aren't they like going out of business or something now? So I don't know that you can really get these anymore. Maybe you can, but I actually really liked this, but at the same time, it literally did just feel like water on your face. So I don't know, but we're gonna use this today for primer. I like this because it feels refreshing and nice and kind of hydrating, but it doesn't really feel like tacky when it dries down, which is usually a good indication of like a primer that is going to keep your makeup on all day long. So I still like this, but I don't know if I like it as much as we all kind of did back then. I did not have an eyeshadow primer from that day. I think one that was really popular in the 2016 to like 2018 era was like the MAC Paint Pot. I feel like who used that? I feel like Naked Tutorials use that a lot. I didn't really use eye primer for a very long time, so I don't have anything from that era, but I do have this YC Collection eye primer. I also feel like then a lot more people used concealer as eye primer, which is not ideal because concealer creases and it is kind of more oily, I feel like, than most eye primers. I mean, you can obviously do whatever the hell you want and whatever works for you. I just find that Eye primers themselves tend to work a little bit better. That's my personal opinion. I think we're gonna jump right into eyes. And I have, this was the holy grail. So the Modern Renaissance palette from ABH. This palette got everybody crazy. And mine is very old and rough. Like, <laughs> this thing's nasty. <laughs> I am going to use this today. This is definitely a throwback. First of all, I love the velvet on these palettes. I think it's so soft and nice. And I know some people like hate velvet. So if you're one of those people, I'm sorry, especially if you can hear me like <laughs> make noise on it. But I really liked these palettes. I still like them. There hasn't been that much love for ABH anymore, but they were very popular then. So I'm going to put Tempura down as a base on top of that eye primer. So I always like to go in with my eye primer and then just put a nude base down. Generally, that's lighter than my skin just to try to make everything like one tone and basically like a blank canvas to start and blend things into. So that's nice. So I will use this Bon Fresco, nice mauve shade here. These are still definitely a little bit powdery, um, but I still like these shadows. So I'm just using this mauve as a nice transition. I like to make sure I bring it over in here too, cause this is like a nice contour area for your eye. But we are just going to build up this transition area. And I always like to take it out and try to like make a nice angle with my shadow. I have a more tapered but fluffy blending brush. So I'm gonna use this to go into antique bronze and I'm gonna put this on the outer corner. And I think I'm gonna do the inner corner too, actually. We might do a little halo today because I feel like that was very popular as well. I feel like in general, more complex shadows, cut creases and super colorful looks were more popular in like 2016 to 2018. I am excited to see that that sort of thing is coming back. At least it feels like it is to me. Personally, I like more complex and colorful looks. They're hard to do from like a YouTuber perspective, but I love watching other people do them. I think. They're so pretty when they're done and it's very artistic. So I want more of that. I feel like this antique bronze wasn't as dark as I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this cypress umber and we're just gonna put this on the very edge here. And these just blend out so easy to be honest. Like I put that on really messy and just <laughs> flicked my brush a little bit and we're, we're blended. So that's great. I'm going to take my finger and go into Vermeer, which is this kind of more pinky, Highlighter shade, super cute. And we're gonna pop that on the center. I'm actually kind of surprised that this palette got as popular as it did during that time. Cause I feel like it's kind of 
very neutral. Like it's very popular for today's color schemes. So we're gonna finish the rest of the eyeshadow after we do our foundation. I always like to do just under the eyeshadow and I like to have concealer and all that stuff done first and then go in and do that. So next I think I'm going to do my eyebrows and I have something very special. I bought this for this video is the Anastasia Dip Brow. Now this, I get the color in taupe. I can't remember what color I used to use because I do have the Brow Wiz in taupe, which I still use every single day, but Dip Brow was in for eyebrows, freaking in. So I'm going to try to use this appropriately and not do blocky eyebrows. I think I stopped using this because it was kind of hard to get natural looking eyebrows with this. I think pencil and even the eyebrow pens are really good, but this is just super pigmented. So let's see, let's see, I'm nervous doing this. I'm just wiping like a little bit off in the cap. So hopefully I can keep it a little bit more tame. So I'm just trying to be super soft with it and not freaking crazy. And I feel like this stuff really goes a long way. You do not need much. All right, I don't think it's that bad. I do think the color I picked was good. So I do think the um, pencil and the dip brow colors match really, really well. So that's good. I'm just gonna go in with my pencil spoolie cause it's a little bit softer than the one that was on that brush and just try to like brush them out a little bit and move the product around in the hairs. I'm not mad at this. Let's do some winged eyeliner. I don't really recall any like eyeliner that was like super, super crazy that everybody went over. So I'm just gonna use my regular Catrice Calligraph Pro matte eyeliner today. If you guys remember something, let me know. Eyeliner's on, sorry, I always have to go off camera, but I have to like really stick my face in my mirror. All right, so before we do any more eye stuff, we're gonna move on to face. Now, I know there was very expensive, like the Giorgio, Giorgio, Giorgio Armani foundation. That one was very popular. I feel like the Cogendo foundation, I feel like that one was a big one at the time. In general, 2018 to t or 2016 to 2018 was a lot more like luxury brands than drugstore. I feel like it was just a time, one, the economy was a lot better. So people could afford it a little bit more. Not everybody, of course, but also like a lot of the influencers were going on these lavish trips. They were getting all of these designer clothes and all this stuff, right? So I just think the luxury stuff was more popular then I never bought like super expensive foundation like that just because I've never been a huge foundation person but I do remember when this came out this is the wet and wild photo focus foundation this went uh, crazy for a while I feel like which is great to see drugstore I feel like in general drugstore has improved so much over the years and I, I think a lot of it is due to influencers and YouTube and just people being more aware that products can be good at affordable prices. So I'm so thankful for brands like Wet n Wild and Elf that put out very good affordable products. So we will be using this today. And I didn't want a sponge, so I'm gonna try to find a brush. We are just going to go like this. I'm definitely more of a sponge person because I like that sponges tend to soak up a lot of product, um, but brushes will definitely make your product go farther. I just like lightweight foundation generally, so I just don't need a ton of coverage. I like to have things toned out, like the redness in my cheeks, and then I'm usually pretty good after that. And honestly, a brush with this foundation is so pretty, and it's a very dewy foundation. Now you can definitely build this up, but I'm going to keep it light covered. Wow, that looks really good. Maybe I'll use a brush more often. My skin looks great. I love that, okay. Now I also don't have any fancy concealers from that era. This one is always been a popular one. It's, I feel like, always gonna be a popular popular one. This is the Maybelline Instant Rewind Eraser. The only thing that gets me with this is the sponge. I hate the sponge. I think it's disgusting. Please just do a dofo applicator, but I'm going to pop some of it on the back of my hand here. Get a little concealer brush. I like this one from Real Techniques, but it's a little bit big. I like kind of more smaller concealer brushes. This shit's bright. But you know what? That, uh, that came with the times because we used to love a bright under eye and a beaming highlighter. I'm just gonna take my foundation brush and maybe mix it with whatever's left on this brush, which isn't much. That's not as bad. Foundation is on, concealer is on. Now I have a great product from that time, the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. So this is the mini size. I don't use like a ton of powder, so I don't need like those giant 
ones. This thing was insane. Everybody loved it. Everybody baked. I don't think anybody really bakes anymore. At least it doesn't seem like it to me, but everybody and their mother baked then. We're gonna not bake, but we're gonna put a generous amount of powder under here. I generally just do a light dusting, but for the sake of today's video, I'm just gonna put a generous amount on. Now, I know some people back in the day, they would also do like contour and then bake underneath it. And that's just too much. It's just too much. So I like blush and I like highlighter. We can skip the contour. I do like to contour underneath my jawline though, because that just looks, it just looks good. Let's finish up these eyes before we do face powders and all that good stuff. So I'm back to my Anastasia Beverly Hills. This thing is like embarrassing, but also if you can tell it's been well loved, so that's okay. I'm gonna go in with the same mauve, mauve shade underneath the lash line here. And I'm just continuing to pull my shadow this way. And then I'm gonna go into antique bronze and keep that on the edge and keep it near the eyelashes a little bit more. I will say, I feel like the shadows in here just aren't like super, super dark. All right, so let's do mascara. This is something I use every single day now, but it definitely got very popular in that time frame. This is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, which is basically a dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex. I believe Tati honestly made this super, super popular. I don't know, in my mind, I just felt like she was the one that was really pushing it to begin with, and then everybody else kind of fell in love with it. Now, mine's a little dry and crusty uh, because I do use it every single day. So we're gonna give it some grace but I do really like the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara as well. It's just expensive. Like it's 20 or $22 for a mascara versus like $8. I'm like drooling over here. That's awesome. Real hot. And I did pick up, so this is kind of a, a merge between 2016, 2018 to now, 2024. So Ardell lashes have always been super, super popular. Also, what's that other brand? I feel like was very popular then. House of Lashes, yeah. I like the drugstore and I'm actually more of a half lash person. So I got a pack of these four half lashes. So we will use these today. I know back then it was all full lash and they were like big lashes. I've never been into super big lashes. I just feel like they make it look like you're gonna fly away if you get a good strong breeze. I think it's great for like filming purposes and things like that, but out and about, it doesn't look as good. Did somebody comment? Aw, somebody, see, ugh, these are the things that make me happy with YouTube videos. So I don't get a lot of comments and stuff like that from you guys, which is fine, it's normal, I'm a small cham channel, but like, on my lip swatch video, somebody, you know, one person already said that Wet n Wild had no swatches on their website, which I had no idea. Um, so they said, thank you for sharing, and this person just put super helpful thank you. So it's just nice, those are the, the things that make me smile. So the reason I like Ardell lashes a lot is because they have the clear bands. I don't like the thick black bands on eyelashes. Um, they're just too hard to like put down, I feel like. And I just like to grab it at the edge of the lashes so that I have this curve and I can just place it. And we gotta get this, let this shit get techy. Really, my husband is leaf blowing right by the fucking house. I mean, I appreciate him leaf blowing, but come on, my man. Well, eyelashes are on, I hope his leaf blowing doesn't drive you guys absolutely bonkers, but if I wait for him to get done, we're never gonna finish, so. I picked this blush because I don't think this blush was popular, but this brand was popular for like bronzers and contour, well, mainly just bronzers, but benefit with these like cardboard cute blushes and bronzers. Obviously Hula was super, super popular. So I'm gonna use this blush today just because it's the closest thing that I have to that. I probably should do more of like a pinkier blush with this look, but that's fine. I don't care. So we have this nice orangey, peachy kind of blush. I think it's super cute. And then I have for highlighter two things that I think were super popular. So one, these Wet n Wild highlighters blew the fuck up. Super, super popular. Um, I have here the, which one are you? Precious Petals. But also I feel like, again, Anastasia Beverly Hills was just killing it then. They came out with all these different highlighter palettes that everybody died for and I think they had like contour ones too. Let's use the ow, wet and wild one, which 
This shit is good. Do, do, do. Now, obviously back then we fucking loved a highlighter. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So I'm not gonna go that crazy. I don't need my cheekbones to look like mirrors. We are gonna definitely have fun with highlighter today. More gold like highlighters, I feel like just looks so good on the skin. Like it makes it look more like sun-kissed. Um, generally I use a lot of like pearly ones, more white, like white toned because I'm super pale, but gold just looks, it's just a summer vibe, you know? I think the last thing we have before finishing up is a lip product. Now there's probably a lot of lip products that went big at the time, but the one I can think of is when the Wet n Wild liquid cat suits came out. These were super popular. I remember a lot of lip swatch videos with these and I have, I think every single color at the time here. I haven't bought any more since. So these are old, they're expired. I'm still gonna use them. It was just matte liquid lipsticks everywhere you looked, which I love the look of them on other people, but I struggle so bad with dry lips and I don't know how to get these things not dry. I've tried moisturizing them like three times a day and I still get dry patches in the middle here. So it's really hard for me to wear like liquid lipsticks. I generally try to go for like a satin type lipstick that's not quite glossy, but isn't quite matte either. I think we might go with this mauve because that would be perfect. So let's try this. I found a lip liner that hopefully will work. This is also by Wet n Wild and this is the Plumberry. Let's go in with this nice expired lipstick. I probably won't die. It'll be fine. I, I don't know. The matte is super pretty. It really is. It just looks like soft pillowy lips when they're matte. My dryness is not too bad today. I got a little bit right here. They still look super soft and pretty. I, I love the matte lipstick vibe. I hope that comes back because I'm vibing with it. These expired ass lipsticks, I still like them. They're still good. I'm gonna continue using them. Maybe I'll buy some new ones, but. <laughs> I think other than that, I only need to do setting spray. I do not have what I used to use, which was the Urban Decay All Nighter. That thing I beat up several bottles of, but I don't have that today. So I'm just gonna use my Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray, because that's what I got today. I'm vibing so hard with this look. It's very like monochromatic, but uh, I dig it. This was the final look from Throwback Products. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you here. Other than that, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.